Hello and welcome to the Scavel channel and today I'm really excited to show you guys the future of budget coding and gaming entertainment that you can build, customize, and even overclock yourself. Now you may be asking, for a channel that's all about PC gaming and tech, why in the world would I accept a review opportunity for such a colorful looking gadget that isn't a gaming PC? For you guys who don't know, I'm a computer engineering student at the University of Arkansas, and I'm very passionate about my work and studies in hardware design, and Java programming, C++ programming, and circuit modeling. So what can you expect out of this DIY laptop? Let's start with the processor, the 1.2 GHz quad-core Cortex-A53. This 64-bit processor is located on the Raspberry Pi 3 board and surprisingly enough is overclockable. It's also boasting 1 GB of RAM and a 400 MHz Video Core 4 iGPU located on the Raspberry Pi 3 board as well that's going to allow us to render Minecraft at a smooth 60 frames per second at 1920x1080. As for more general specifications, it's rocking the Cano OS operating system along with a 10.1 inch HD screen, 3000 mAh battery, 4 USB ports, and a wireless chargeable keyboard. Anyways, let me show you my experience building this device. Okay, let's unbox this. Okay, okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And here are different components. You got here what looks like to be the battery, cable for the battery. This looks like it's some sort of sensor. Here, this looks like some uh, cable management in a really simple form. Now, let's see, here we have a PCB component, and here we have three USB ports. Interesting. And then finally, one more thing that connects over a USB port. And the piece of resistance, what I believe is the Raspberry Pi, maybe, maybe not. Oh, and here we've got the big old battery, or the plug-in. Got a backplate, and got even more cables. It's just gonna be a, a huge entourage of of cables, though they're color-coded, so I believe they're going to be used for specific purposes. And yes, can't forget about the screen. Put this right here, gotta make some room for this computer. Mmm. Here we go. This is supposed to be kid-friendly, so if I can't solve this, then I'm, I'm kind of a... Yeah, should reassess my master's in computer engineering. Here we have the instruction manual. Pick up the screen. Okay, uh-huh. Now plug the brain onto the screen. You know, this is actually pretty cool. Not gonna lie. You can just, I believe, just kind of press it down. All right, grab the cable block. Oh, this, this is actually pretty simple at the moment. Yeah, snap it onto the screen. Mm-hmm. Jeez, if I were like 12, this would be like the coolest Christmas present. Yes, 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 yes. Grab your yellow HDMI cable. It's just like teaching you as I go along. It's pretty neat. Grab the orange cable. Yes, this cable sends data when the screen is touched to the computer. Okay, so it's gonna be user input. So plug, yep. Plug this into one of these. It's just using a bunch of USB ports at the moment just for connection. Let's see, okay. And we got ah, this cable management block coming in handy yet again. As you can see, right, I mean, it's basically drawing out where you need to go. Now add, add some electricity, yes, here's our battery pack. Place it this way. Okay, at the moment, this is what our board looks like. Very clean in presentation. I mean, I've had no trouble with it so far. Pretty sure most of you guys won't have much trouble either. Now grab, and it just always updates you with what your board should look like. That's really nice. That's what the youngins need. All right, now you need it. Okay, get the keyboard. All right, flip it over. Okay, gotta take this off. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and get the case. That's what this big thing here was for. Okay, and push it onto the screen. So I believe, all right, that goes that way. It should go like, this. Just snap into place. You know what's pretty cool? This is like see-through, you know? Kind of like see the computer in action. So let's see, where is the power button? I want to I want to see this thing turn on. Oh, there it is. Hold for three seconds. And... Okay. Oh! Oh! Bless. It turned on. And I've now built a laptop that you can code on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Check this out. 
Check this out. Okay, yeah, I better put this right here. Look at this, look at this. Follow the white rabbit, type CD rabbit hole, then press enter. All right, what is your name? My name is, we're, we're gonna say Mark. Nice to meet you, Mark. Oh, I'm loving the display graphics. Like, I haven't computer yet, uh-huh. Um, tell me this isn't the matrix, okay? <laughs> Type say hello and press enter, all right. Oh, yes, I heard you. All right, let's use code to make art. Okay, circle 100. Okay, oh, did I misspell circle? I did, RIP. Okay, I wonder what language this is using. I mean, it's obviously it's gonna be like, it's a tutorial, clearly. So I mean, there isn't probably a specified language. All right, let's make, oh, now the coding, the coding begins. Okay, all right, let's make my wallpaper. What happens when you snap these code blocks together? Set background color to blue. Okay, okay. Draw clouds, uh-huh. Give me some clouds. Oh, this is this is so basic. I mean, it, it's building, it's BYOB basically, if you guys know what that is. Uh, we're gonna go, let's see, we're gonna go, go that skin color. Let's see. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is so basic. Holy cow. Faces. I'm gonna do the one with the tongue, tongue sticking out. Uh huh. Suits. Okay. Okay. Am I just a ninja or. Oh. I wanna be something cooler though. Can I, can I be Goku? I'll be that. Alright. Oh, is there lag? No, no, no. That can't be lag. That can't be lag. Okay, there was a, there was a little bit of lag. Oh, and. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So you can do stuff in Minecraft through code. That means this is probably using Java, which is great. Java is a good program, of course. Hack Minecraft. <laughs> We're hacking. You know what? I'm gonna have to tinker around with this. I'm gonna have to legitimately tinker around and see what the heck I can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, now we're loading Hack Minecraft. Okay. I'll probably stop the unboxing here because I'm just gonna play around with this thing and see what the heck I can do. Uh, yeah, let's, let's do your origin story. Okay. I'm gonna leave this as it is, but holy cow. As you guys can see, this thing is incredibly easy to build. I mean, oh my gosh. If, if you can, if you know how to build an actual computer, you can definitely build this. It's just a bunch of really nice wiring, easy cable management, and a very simple and easy tutorial to follow. Uh, and look, even in the, uh, wow, they even have a troubleshooting manual here in case anything goes wrong. Oh, and it looks like on the back of this thing, you can actually attach the keyboard to it so it can travel along with your laptop. Man, this is super neat. But yeah, man, I hope you enjoyed the unboxing portion of this video. I'm just gonna play around with this. See what the heck I can make. With that out of the way, what can you expect to get the advertised 150 hours of content the Kano computer advertises? The device itself is very gamer friendly while allowing you to learn at a comfortable pace, which is why it features apps such as Hack Minecraft, Make Pong, and even a pixelized RPG style adventure mode that progresses as you complete more and more coding challenges throughout the Kano operating system. This all sounds really simple, but it's actually kind of addictive. For example, in Hack Minecraft, you can go from building a basic TNT tower all the way up to creating your own castle fortress, and you can do this all by unlocking new coding blocks, granting you new powers and creation tools to program your own world in Minecraft. You can integrate new features into your games by dragging and dropping logic blocks chronologically from top to bottom, and then running them to see their effects on the game world. After completing all these challenges and game modes, you are completely free to share them online using Kano World, where you can have others tinker around and modify your designs. In a sense, you're basically releasing open source software that can be used by anyone on a small scale, which is 
actually kind of freaky when you think about it. However, this is a computer kit, so that also means it should act like a computer, right? Like a desktop computer, you can access contents of the Kano through a file explorer or if you're more tech savvy, through the terminal. You can also monitor the performance as well through the task manager, use a full on mouse and keyboard if you wish, and with that, you have the ability, like I said, to overclock that quad core Cortex A53 processor if you want even more frames per second in Minecraft. And that's definitely a plus in my book. Likewise, the device has the ability to surf the web, browse YouTube, message through WhatsApp, access your email, drop notes on a text editor, along with so many more apps through the Kano App Store. If the Kano Computer Kit Complete didn't convince you enough that this is just like a desktop computer, then here's my personal favorite feature about the gadget. It's got a built-in IDE for Python that allow you to code for real through the Python shell straight away. I like to see an iPad offer that. Starting with the pros, for $280 is very affordable when placed up against other all-in-one tablets or laptops in terms of what they can offer. I really believe you can't actually find anything better than this in terms of what it can provide in terms of interactive learning through a personal device. I also have to give huge props to the effortless installation process the Kano Coding Kit Complete provided that anybody pretty much should be able to figure out. The manual provided does a fantastic job at guiding and reviewing your build all through a very clear presentation. The Kano OS interface needs some positive notoriety as well due to how accessible it is to learn and find every app and feature this device has to offer. It's simple enough for people who aren't familiar with computers to navigate, but can also be more complex for those who are more tech savvy and want to explore all the different levels the Kano Computer Kit can offer. Finally, and I'm not kidding here, the games and apps provided are actually really fun and engaging. For once, coding and getting better at it resulted in a more enjoyable and progressive experience. Whereas in school, the better you get at coding, the more stressful the assignments get. Also, the touch interactive screen is a huge bonus too. But there are some cons that I do want to mention. There were times where the Kano operating system showed obvious signs of lag, most of those times being when I was doing too much in the Hack Minecraft app. My last big complaint would be that the keyboard is very small and does take away from the experience, especially if you have bigger hands. And with that, the mouse pad provided is sometimes flimsy and won't register all of your clicks. Some advice candle that I have directly for you guys is to make a dedicated semicolon button on the keyboard. If you want users to fully utilize the included Python IDE, then don't make us have to press the function and zero button to add a semicolon to our code. That's really inconvenient. I really wish this was my introduction to coding versus, you know, my basic hello world assignment that then sprawled into many more stressful, more ambitious coding assignments in school. If you enjoyed this review, then consider subscribing to the Scatterbolt YouTube channel because here we're all about budget PC tech and gaming. And as always, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe and all that. And this is the Scatterbolt channel. Signing out.